In this video, I will be talking about the Three Kingdoms period of China, focusing on the many talented heroes of that time. Lu Meng was an officer of Wu, a capable warrior in his youth and a scholar in his later life. Initially he was rash and reckless, but eventually he managed to exercise self-restraint. He possessed the magnanimity of a great statesman and was not a mere warrior as his lord Sun Quan once claimed. He was courageous, witty, decisive and well versed in military strategy. Deceiving Hao Pu and capturing Guan Yu, those were his greatest moments. A historian named Chen Shao wrote a biography about Lu Meng, and in it Sun Quan approached Meng and another officer named Ji Yang Quin. Both of you are commanders now, Quan said, so you should enrich yourself with knowledge. Lu Meng rebutted, I have many things to attend to in the army, so I'm afraid I won't have time to read. Quan went on to list a number of books he had read in his youth and how he still continues to learn. Confucius once said something similar, you will gain nothing by just thinking. Even if you give up on meals and sleep and just keep thinking, so why don't you learn about it instead? When Emperor Guan Wu was busy with military affairs, he still found time to read. Cao Cao also agrees he is already old, but never gives up on learning. Why don't you give yourself some encouragement? Sun Quan's words resonated with Lu Meng, enough that he went on to surpass many local Confucian scholars in the number of texts that he read. He was born in the Runan Commandery in 178 and died in 220. When he was in his early teens, his brother-in-law served under the little conqueror Sun Se. He had followed his brother to battle against the Shan Yue tribes on a few occasions, and been scorned for it by his mother. He would counter by arguing it is difficult to survive in poverty. If we can prove ourselves through hard work, then wealth will come eventually. How can we catch the tiger cub if we don't enter the tiger's den? He continued following his brother to the battles for a while, until an official under Sun Se found out about his actions. What can he do? the official asked. His behaviour will only lead to him feeding himself to the tiger. Lu Meng resented this and killed the official there on the spot. He fled to seek shelter with a friend, but after some time to gather his thoughts, he gave himself in to a local colonel. This colonel must have known Lu Meng or his family, for he pleaded with Sun Se to spare Meng's life. Se agreed, and soon after, he not only pardoned Meng, but appointed him as a close aide. Lu Meng went on to be recommended to replace his brother as the major of a separate command by Zhang Zhao, who was a well-respected state official, one of the two Zhangs of Wu. This recommendation was granted by Sun Se shortly before he was assassinated. When Se's younger brother Sun Quan took over, he aimed to reform the armies. This concerned Lu Meng, as his smaller unit would be merged into a larger one, resulting in him being dismissed as a commander. He purchased some elaborately designed armour for his troops to show off at Quan's inspection, which worked perfectly. Quan was very impressed and left the unit as it was. Not long after the reformation, Quan marched on a nearby commandery. Lu Meng was given a role in the army, and performed well enough in the coming battles to earn a promotion to commandant who pacifies the north, and appointed as the chief of a nearby county. In the year 208, Sun Quan marched again against a neighbouring warlord named Wang Zhu. The two forces met at the Battle of Xiangxia, where Lu Meng was assigned as a navy commander. During the battle, two Wu officers, Ling Tong and Dong Shi, managed to destroy a couple of large warships. Meanwhile, Lu Meng successfully defeated Wang Zhu's navy, killing one of the subordinates in the process. This death forced Wang Zhu to retreat leading to a decisive victory for the Wu forces. Lu Meng's actions in battle earned him 10 million coins and a promotion to the general of the household, who sweeps across the wilderness. In the winter of 208, the allied forces of Liu Bei and Sun Quan of Wu met Tao Tao's enormous army at the naval battle of Red Cliffs GB. Due to a lucrative planning and a handful of intricate strategies, the allied forces were victorious. Lu Meng was assigned a position in the naval battle itself, but also marched on to pursue Tao Tao's retreating armies under the command of one of the greatest minds of Wu, Zhu Weiyu, often referred to as Master Zhu. Tao Tao left his cousin Tao Ren in Nan Commandery, where they were soon besieged by the Wu army. A defector had arrived with his men at the Wu camp. Zhu Weiyu suggested to Sun Quan that Lu Meng be given the unit of men, to which Meng disagreed. He praised the defector as a courageous person, 
and thought it disrespectful to take his men after he had travelled such a long way. Sun Quan agreed with Meng on this occasion, and gave the defector his unit back. The siege started, and the first unit sent in by Zhu Yu was Gan Ning. He soon found himself caught off guard by a separate enemy force, and in need of assistance. Gan Ning was an ex-pirate with a murderous past, so was not a very popular man, but a tremendous fighter. At times Sun Quan wanted to execute him, but Lu Meng, who was also furious at his inability to follow orders, said the empire is yet to be pacified. Fierce generals like Gan Ning are hard to come by, you should tolerate him. Quan heeded those words, and Gan Ning went on to serve Wu faithfully until his death. Regarding reinforcing Gan Ning's unit, none of the present generals claimed to have enough men to spare, and so refused to go help. Lu Meng, not being one to sit idly by, insisted to Master Zhue and another Wu veteran named Cheng Pu, I suggest we leave Ling Tong behind whilst I follow you two to help Gan Ning. I assure you Ling Tong can hold our position for at least 10 days. Ling Tong was left behind because he and Gan Ning didn't get along. During the recent conflict between Wu and Huang Zhu, Gan Ning had killed Ling Tong's father. Before they left, Lu Meng suggested that they cut off the enemy's path of retreat. Master Zhui agreed to send 300 men to block the path with huge logs. The Wu reinforcements were successful in relieving Gan Ning, and as planned, the enemy encountered the blockade as they fled in the night. They were forced to dismount, which meant the Wu forces were up a couple hundred horses. They sent them back across the river on boats to the main army, bolstering their morale enough to join up with the secondary unit and attack Tao Ren. The battle was eventually won, and Sun Quan took claim over Nan Commandery. After his deeds in this battle, Lu Meng was promoted to Lieutenant General and appointed as a Prefect. Two years later, in 210, Master Zhue passed away from illness and was replaced by the strategist Lu Su. Lu Su had always seen Lu Meng as beneath consideration, but his newfound responsibility, plus the praises other officers had given Lu Meng, made him think he should reconsider his stance, and so paid him a visit. After a few drinks, Lu Meng looked up to Lu Su and spoke plainly. You're going to be stationed near Guan Yu soon. Have you made any contingency plans to deal with unforeseen circumstances? Lu Su's thoughts were to deal with things as they come, to which Lu Meng strongly disagreed, by saying, Guan Yu is a person with the might of bears and tigers. How can you not make preparations beforehand? Lu Meng then went on to share with Lu Su his five strategies on how to deal with Guan Yu. Lu Su was very surprised. One account says he placed his hand on Meng's shoulder and said, I never knew you had such insights until I came here today. Another account suggests he said, I heard you were previously a mere warrior, but now you have taken up scholarly pursuits and you are no longer that Meng of Wu. Either way, Lu Su frequently visited Lu Meng and his mother, and the two formed a strong friendship. Two Chinese idioms, Ah Meng from Wu, and Rub One's Eyes and Look, originated from this event. Ah Meng from Wu describes a simpleton who studies hard to become smarter, whilst rub one's eyes and look means to change your opinion of someone especially after they've improved themselves. In the year 213, Tao Tao appointed an officer to Wan County to raid the borders of Wu. Lu Meng dealt with this threat by first unsuccessfully negotiating a surrender with the invaders, then by beating them in battle. Two subordinates of Wei surrendered to Lu Meng after the fight, along with a handful of civilians. Lu Meng's unit then marched onto Wu Shu to meet up with Sun Quan in aiding and repelling another of Cao Cao's advances into Wu. When he arrived, there was a debate about which strategy to use. Sun Quan was in favour of building a dock to make boardings and landings easier, but the other commanders voted to sail straight across and engage Cao Cao's army head on. Lu Meng seconded Sun Quan's proposal and convinced the other officers how battles are unpredictable and that if they were defeated and the enemy closed in, the docks would make it quicker and easier to escape. So construction on the docks was ordered, which enabled Wu to successfully defend against Wei numerous times. Tao Tao eventually gave up, and in 214 retreated from Wu Shu. He took a more patient approach, and left the development of Wan County, with a focus on its agriculture, to one of his officers. This officer went on to bribe the local bandits to harass the Wu territory. Lu Meng was well aware of this and had reported to Sun Quan that Tao Tao's next harvest would be bountiful, and their numbers increased drastically. So Quan personally led an attack on the area. 
a war council was held and all the officers were asked for their opinions. Some officers suggested to dig out the land and create small hills so the army can rest and wait for supplies. Lu Meng rebutted this with a number of points. He stated how there isn't enough time to dig and set up a camp as the enemy reinforcements led by Zhang Liao will arrive before they finish. He also noted how the rainfall was heavy at the time and the ships can leave and dock with ease, but the longer they wait, the more difficult retreat becomes. Lu Meng's plan to secure total victory was to make use of the Wu army's high morale to march on, surround Tao Ren, then launch an attack from all directions, then to utilize the water route for a quick escape. The general Gan Ning led the assault with Lu Meng following behind with the elite troops. Lu Meng beat the war drums himself to boost the soldiers' morale who went on to secure victory by noon forcing Zhang Liao's reinforcements to turn around and retreat. Once again Lu Meng was praised for his efforts by Sun Quan, earning himself an administrator role, 600 households and 30 more subordinates to command. He earned even more deeds when he got home after learning of some bandits who had successfully evaded capture by a few Wu officers. Sun Quan ordered Lu Meng to quell them and it was done. He killed the chiefs but was kind enough to allow the followers to revert to a normal civilian life. As a part of the agreement of alliance between Liu Bei's Shu Kingdom and Sun Quan's Wu Kingdom, the territories of Jing province were being loaned to Liu Bei, and Sun Quan wanted them back. Sun Quan was refused, and so ordered Liu Meng to seize three commanderies from Jing province, which was currently occupied by Guan Yu. Liu Meng sent letters and convinced all but one of the administrators to surrender. Upon learning of this, Liu Bei garrisoned men in the area, and ordered Guan Yu to march and retake the commandery. Lu Su was then sent to block Guan's army, and Lu Meng was ordered to give up on his current objective and to come help deal with Guan Yu. Before Lu Meng left to follow his new orders, he manipulated some officers of his army, and also the last administrator, that Liu Bei was in fact isolated, and Guan Yu was busy, and that no reinforcements were coming. With this ruse, he successfully subdued the last administrator and his commandery. No battle was fought over Jing, as the two leaders eventually made a deal to split it along the Xiang River. During the next three years, Lu Meng was involved in two major conflicts. First was the Battle of Heifei, where the massive Wu army sieged a castle which was guarded by the Wei officer, Zhang Liao. As it was a drawn out battle, plague eventually spread through the Wu army, and they were forced to retreat. They were unexpectedly met with a fierce counterattack, and Sun Quan almost lost his life. Many Wu officers fought well to save their lord, and Lu Meng was among them. The second conflict finds Lu Meng back at Ruxu, where he was put in command of an army ordered to repel against an invasion from Tao Tao. Lu Meng made use of the docks that were constructed here years ago, and was able to suppress his enemy with archer fire, enough so that they were not able to establish a foothold and were forced to retreat prematurely. In 217, Lu Su died, and Lu Meng was promoted to fill his position. He inherited 10,000 men, many lands, administrator roles and titles. He was positioned back in Jing province near the disputed territory of the Sun Liu alliance. Guan Yu was still stationed across the river, and Lu Meng was well aware of Guan's military capabilities and his desire to retake Jing. Lu Su before had always vouched for peaceful relations between the Sun family and Liu Bei, so that the two may unite against Tao Tao, but Lu Meng had a different approach. He had a secret letter sent to Sun Quan, outlining a strategy on how to defend Wu's northern border from Tao Tao with very few soldiers. At the same time, an attack could be launched upon Guan Yu in Jing, forcing him to deal with the full force of Wu. Sun Quan agreed that it is wise to attack whilst their army is so powerful, as it will be harder to do so later. Quan also asked for Meng's opinion on plans to invade Cao Cao in Zhu province. Lu Meng agreed the area could be captured, but noted Tao had not long defeated Yuan Shao, and that once he had pacified the north, he will march south and recapture it with ease, as the land there is suited for cavalry, which is Tao Tao's elite unit. Lu Meng doubled down on the idea of first defeating Guan Yu, to unite Jing again, which would not only eliminate a threat, but also provide the strength for a successful northern campaign. Lu Meng was stationed at Lu Ku, where he upheld peaceful ties with Guan Yu until 219, 
when Guan launched an attack on Tao Ren at Farn Castle. For the past couple years, Lu Meng had found himself frequently ill and so used that to his advantage by feigning a trip to the capital city to see a doctor. As predicted, Guan Yu's spies reported this back to him and he followed up by bolstering his main unit with the defending armies that were still in Jing. Guan Yu forced Sun Quan's hand after he attacked a Wu storehouse. Quan ordered Lu Meng to utilize his strategy to take Jing so that the main army can march in with no resistance. Lu Meng took his elite units and disguised themselves as merchants and civilians. They slowly sailed along the river, stealthily capturing watchtowers one by one, leaving Guan Yu's forces completely unaware of the invasion. The two defending officers, Mi Fang and Fu Shi Ren, ended up surrendering. Mi Fang was still scorned and in fear of Guan Yu for a number of reasons, one being that he accidentally destroyed some weaponry in a fire. Lu Meng was sympathetic to him and easily convinced him to join. The other defender, Fu Xi Ren, had already been convinced to surrender by another Wu officer, and so gave himself up to Lu Meng as well. Once he had claimed Jing, Lu Meng's strict orders won the hearts of the people. His men were forbidden to disturb the peace in any way, especially citizens of the Guan clan. He had the treasury sealed up until Sun Quan arrived to prevent looting. He distributed medicine, food and clothing to the citizens, and on one occasion was forced to execute an old comrade of his after he was caught stealing from a civilian's house. He is said to have shed a tear after that incident, but not a single other soldier dared to defy his orders. News of this demoralised Guan Yu's soldiers as they learned Lu Meng was giving the people better treatment than Guan Yu was, and many soldiers left his ranks to return home. Not long after that, Guan Yu was surrounded and killed, and all the commanderies of Jing became part of Wu. Lu Meng was appointed many positions and rewarded heavily with gold feasts and even a ceremony celebrating his defeat of Guan Yu. But Lu Meng was growing weaker and was reluctant to accept the gifts, nor had the energy to celebrate. Sun Quan had Taoist priests pray to extend his lifespan and offered vast rewards for anyone that could cure Lu Meng. Quan became almost obsessed with trying to heal him. He regularly visited Lu Meng but feared it was worsening his condition and so drilled a hole into his quarters so he could observe him. He would weep and grieve if Meng didn't eat and would rejoice and celebrate if his condition improved. But despite his efforts, Meng eventually passed away. Sun Quan was even more upset when he learned that Lu Meng had made arrangements for all the items and luxuries he was given to be sealed in a vault and returned to Quan upon his death. In his youth, Lu Meng could not read or write. He had to verbally instruct or ask someone for help to issue his commands. But he didn't let that prevent him from earning many achievements in his life. 